and welcome to Women Developing Brilliance. I'm your host, Casey Rossi. It's my great pleasure to present interesting stories of creative women sharing their message and lighting up the world with their presence and offerings. Get ready to be inspired. You can learn more about creating a business that you love by visiting kcrossi.com. Enjoy! My guest today is Andrea Freeman. Andrea believes that transforming your life is the access to transforming your business. As a mindful business coach and peak performance planner, she works with the creative entrepreneurs to support them in aligning with who they are at their core, with their unique personal gifts and unstoppable power. I really enjoyed my conversation with Andrea. We have a ton in common. We talk about the importance of reverse engineering our plan, how to hone it until you own it, the art of receiving, how success leaves clues, and how to show up fully as your complete self. I hope you enjoy our conversation as much as I had having it with Andrea. Enjoy. Andrea, welcome to the show. I cannot wait to dive in and have a juicy conversation with you. I'm super excited to be here. Let's do it. All right. Sounds great. So talk to us a little bit about some of your entrepreneurial background. I see that you started your very first business at age 12 and you've had multiple um, iterations since then. So I'm wondering at such a young age, what gave you the spark of being your own boss? Ooh. So I was, I am a lifetime member of the Girl Scouts. And when I was 12 years old, my Girl Scout troop, everyone got certified to become babysitters through the Red Cross. And right after that certification, I just started printing out flyers and distributing them around the neighborhood and, you know, just marketing and monetizing. I don't know exactly where the spark came from, but I definitely saw an opportunity and was just doing something that seemed fun, right? Like when you're 12 years old, you just are doing things that seem fun. And um, yeah, and then continued on my entrepreneurial journey. I've done a couple of other things. I've been a private chef. I've owned a catering company. I've been an event planner. So, you know, throughout life, I've also had other jobs and learned from, you know, successful other business owners and organizations. But what I think was bitten very early by the entrepreneurial bug. No doubt. I feel like we are cut from the exact same cloth. So I hope I don't say that too many times throughout this episode. But as I was telling you um, off camera that reading your podcast one sheet, I was like, wow, we have a lot in common. So this is this is going to be cool. I know that you focus a lot on mindset and abundance mindset and growth. And um, have you always been into personal development? I have. So right at about that same time that I started that first business, I happened to pick up a book that was my mother's. It was Dr. Andrew Weil's like meditation book and mindfulness book. And, uh, you know, at that age, just started doing some of those practices just in my bedroom. You know, I wasn't talking to anybody about it. I wasn't seeing if I was doing it right. I was just like reading and, and trying things out. And, you know, that would go in and out through, throughout my life. But I would say like at about 25 years old, when I started to really have some big questions about life, I had gone to school for education and that didn't really work out at what teaching wasn't uh, a fit for me. I started to have really big questions about, you know, what am I here for? What's my life for? What's my purpose in this world? And I mean, I scout, I like took every course you could. I read every book you could. I worked with every coach you could um, and was really hungry for it and really ended up working for a leadership development company at that time. And then, um, you know, wanted to strike out on my own as an entrepreneur. So I feel now as a business coach, I get to really synthesize all of those experiences um, into, into this business. Yeah. I love that. And I know one of your specialties is peak performance. So I would love to hear how you help people synthesize their peak performance and even have a focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually, uh, you know, through working with the leadership company and also the kind of events that I was planning in my event planning company, I mean, I was planning uh, events with red carpet celebrities and, and very high functioning, uh, individuals. And so I was getting to see kind of behind the curtains, what people who are operating at a really high level are doing. And I was noticing some trends, right? 
I was noticing that they had some sort of mindfulness practice. I was noticing how incredibly grateful they were for the things that they had in their lives. And not all of them came from a privileged background, you know? I was noticing that there was this really active and ongoing practice of of being present and honoring the people and savoring the experiences that they had in their lives. And so I also started to put that into my business, where I, where I wasn't fulfilled, um, where I wasn't experiencing complete satisfaction and alignment with my soul's purpose, I started to really clear out the clutter and take away anything that was not feeling like it served that ultimate purpose. And so when I started doing that as a business owner and started producing more results, I really started to to benefit from everything that I saw these peak performance individuals doing in their lives. And I was like, wow, there's really something here. Like this stuff really works. And so, you know, 15 years into entrepreneurship, now I find myself as a coach and I really get to work with people through, you know, some proprietary offerings on how to be able to align with their purpose, how to be able to own the full scope of who they are and share that purpose with the world and how to, tackle any things where their mindset or their beliefs are out of alignment and, uh, you know, shift their perspective so that they can be their, you know, their biggest cheerleader, how to take inspired action and how to do it all on repeat. Because I think sometimes we try out some different methodologies or, you know, advice, we grab a mantra, we try a little meditation and we get some results, but then we're not, it's a little bit of a fluke. We're not exactly sure what we did. So I give people Mm -hmm. the tools to be empowered, to recreate it on an ongoing basis. I love that. That's awesome. So I want to just rewind to the part where you really were looking at patterns of other people ahead of us. You Mm -hmm. know, the ones that were really stepping into their full self, as you said, and We know that success leaves clues. And I love that your brain was already starting to break down repetitive patterns and find something that we could also replicate and experience those same benefits and results. So hats off to you for that. I love that that kind of analytical mindset. And to your point of doing things on repeat, does it boil down as simply as consistent micro habits in your mind? I think that consistent micro habits are definitely beneficial. I also think that there's really going to work on the things that are subconscious. So the things that, you know, are uh, hidden from our view, the things that we've tried, you know, various uh, goal setting, we've tried various programs, we've tried implementing more mindfulness techniques of, you know, we're trying to meditate more, we're trying to be more grateful, all of that stuff. And still somehow, even though I know I really, really want this goal, uh, there's something that I'm not breaking through to be able to get to that next level. And I find that this is very often where our limiting beliefs are lurking, um, very much under the carpet, in the corners of the room. You know, I mean, they're sneaky. We hide them from ourselves. And uh, that this is the most powerful place to go to work because this is where we get the biggest results. Question for you as a business coach consultant, do you find that people are willing to go there, like willing to look under the rug, willing to address those mental gremlins or, and and this is a general question, but I find in the business arena, uh, you know, especially when people are trying to scale and they're really trying to see financial results yesterday. And they're really maybe in a space of like, man, I'm trying to do all the right things, but I'm not quite seeing that return or I'm seeing a return, but I feel like it should be bigger. I'm just wondering your experience on the type of client that's like, you know what? I've been doing the same thing, getting the same results. I know there's something deeper and I'm willing to do the work. I'm willing to go in that like messy middle and clear it out once and for all. Yeah. This is usually the space that people are in when they come to me. Usually they're a few years into business. They've been trying some different things and they're just like really frustrated, either because they have already hit some major milestone, you know, whether it's revenue or certain number of clients or whatever, and it's taken a lot of effort to get there and they just 
can't imagine getting to the next milestone or level without a lot of effort still. And they're, you know, feeling like maybe that would cause some burnout or um, they're starting out in business and they really want to do it very intentionally. So I, I find that people who come to me are in those two spaces, but I am super upfront when I start working with someone, you know, or even talking about working together, that this work is not for the faint of heart, that this is, uh, you know, what's on the other side of it is what they're looking for, but that it's going to take something to get there. Right. Um, and usually I find that the people who say yes are, they're up for it. Right. They're, they're ready. They're ready. Yeah. Yeah. I think that this is a really important point, um, Andrea, because for those listeners that have maybe known in their heart that it's time to narrow their niche, but they're afraid because they feel like they can help so many people with their services or they would be leaving money on the table, or there's just a lot of other reasons they could be afraid to narrow it down. I really am hearing the value of narrowing your niche in your scenario where it's like you can laser in and magnetize your divine right client because one, you're clear with your message and two, you're very open in your communications of this is not a get rich quick scheme. There's some layers here. We may be going into areas that you haven't gone in and it's going to be worth it to get to the other side. Yeah. I find that when people are resisting niching down or really only targeting their like soulmate client, it's usually out of some sort of fear or lack mentality that there's usually something hanging out that is about like, you know, I say I'm open to abundance and I say I'm open to spirituality, but I'm not really sure that (laughs) it's all going to flow to me if I don't try to serve everybody. So, um, you know, that's where, that's where I said that the part in, um, you know, in my methodology, that's really about getting clear about who you are. It's not only getting clear about your unique talents and your unique gifts and, and, um, you know, what lights you up, but having clarity about that is great. That's usually what gets you in the door of business, right? That's what makes you say, I'm going to hang up my shingle. But getting clear about who you are, I'm talking definitely about a much more divine, a much more spiritual realm where you get like down to your core, how infinitely powerful you are and that it's impossible for there to not be success, right? So when you're, when you're approaching it from that space, then, then you're ready to stop spinning your wheels. Then you see how putting in the effort in all these areas and trying to serve everybody actually isn't serving anybody. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have a quick tip for somebody that may be struggling in that realm that actually can bring about a taste of what abundance mindset could look like for them when it comes to this specific concept of narrowing your niche niche and trusting? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that we are really all a work in progress and that I think when we give ourselves space, when we give ourselves room to learn and to grow and to evolve, and this is something that is sometimes tricky when we've been doing it all ourselves and like our systems are in place and our practices are in place. But if we bring ourselves back to that beginner mindset. If we, I don't want to say fake it till you make it, but really hone it till you own it. Then you are in that mindset for things to unfold and for the the answers to start coming to you. And, um, you know, like let your personal evolution really fuel your business revolution. That's kind of one of my favorite mantras about doing the work to, allow yourself to be freed up to have it be more effortless, to have the clients appear more elegantly and easily. I love that. That's amazing. And I like that little tweak, hone it till you own it. That's quotable. I love that. And the other thing is, you know, you've talked about peak performance, working with high achievers, Um, And also I know in the female entrepreneurial space, you know, we are doers, like we're not afraid of the tactical stuff and the to-do list and checking things off and showing up for ourselves. But the flip side of that is what I'm really interested in. And that is the art of receiving. Why is it so dang hard? (laughs) Yeah. That that's a million dollar question, isn't it? So I think one I think that our culture really does ingrain in us a a working more, a tactical like the the traditional business advice out there is very much about doing. It's about 
you know, some new strategy, some new method, like you're going to find the answer in a book or at that next seminar or on that next webinar, you're going to get caught up in other people's sales funnels. And, and all of this, it can be very useful, but it also can be a huge distraction, right? So when we just open up to becoming better receivers, like to just even open up to the idea of what if, what would life look like if I was better at receiving? Because we all want to receive more, right? We all want more money, more support, more love, more freedom, more in every area of life, because that's what makes life so rich. And so that is an allowing. That is definitely something that you open up to the unfolding of it. And there's less doing, there's more being a lot less doing. Yeah, absolutely. And so for someone that's saying, man, you know, Andrea and Casey, this sounds easy. <laughs> it sounds easy. Sounds like I can just let go and allow. But for me, it's an uphill battle. What kind of like tip or advice could you let that person know? Well, first of all, I get it. Like I have been there. I have been spinning my wheels. I am a mother. I have a five-year-old. When I you know, first got back to business after having my daughter, I wasn't sure how I was going to manage it all. And I really um, decided to take being a little bit more mindful, a little more seriously. And that's when I started becoming much more diligent about my meditation practice. And I would say that this is the thing that really opened things up for me because carving out, I mean, I do 20 minutes twice a day. You start with five minutes if you have never done this before. Like do what feels right for you. But uh, starting to make that time, especially as a new mom and as an entrepreneur, to focus on myself, my wellness, my own peak performance. You know, there's that whole thing about when you're on the airplane and it's going down, put your own mask on first, right? Like to fill yourself up because when you're in that space, creating, taking those inspired actions, that starts to happen more easily. Then that starts to happen less from a place of lack and I want this and you know, desiring, and this would be nice, but more from a place of inspiration, more from a place of fullness, more from a place of overflowing and can't stop myself, myself from sharing these gifts. Right. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. I'm a big meditation fan as well. I think it grounds you. And I think it's a fabulous tip for people that may in this time feel like they're spinning out or overwhelmed or in that space. So I think that that's a really practical thing. And, and like you said, start where you are. If that looks like five minutes then embrace it and don't compare yourself to anybody else and what they're doing and at what level they're doing it. in. so I really love that you shared that. Did you ever just wish there was a group of high vibe women entrepreneurs that you could hang out with a place where you could share your wins, get a biz question asked and be around people that just get you. Well, there is my friend. It's my women developing brilliance, Facebook group. I created a place on the web where like minds and open hearts could continue the conversations that we start here on the podcast. Fulfill your desire to develop friendships with women from around the globe, women who are on the solopreneur journey, just like you. Now more than ever, we are craving authentic connections. Believe me, your voice matters, your work matters, and having the support of a close-knit community can make all the difference in the world. So head over to Facebook and go to facebook.com slash groups slash Women Developing Brilliance and request to join my private Women Developing Brilliance Facebook group, the gathering place for heart-centered female entrepreneurs looking to create an impact, increase their income, and connect deeply with themselves and others in the process. I can't wait to welcome you in my Women Developing Brilliance Facebook group where you'll be encouraged to introduce yourself, ask a question, and meet other ambitious lightworkers just like you. Again, it's facebook.com slash groups slash women developing brilliance. I'll catch you there. I'm curious how you help others connect with their internal guide. Mm. So the journey is actually more effortless. Yeah. So I mean, connecting with your internal guide, your intuition is a huge part of the work that I do. And I think women 
are incredibly intuitive. I mean, I think that this is just in our DNA. And I think that our culture and our pace in our culture kind of forces us in a lot of ways to turn that off. And so, I mean, I mean, I feel like I'm an ad for meditation, but like, again, coming back to <laughs> you that, don't, like, preach, preach. <laughs> <laughs> like, when you have that silence, when you slow down, when you're not spinning for even a few moments a day, those internal pieces of wisdom, those little nuggets, they can bubble up to the top. And I rarely do my best thinking when I am on the hamster wheel, right? Like I'm oh, usually sure. not mostly in my most creative space when I'm just trying to stay in the race. But when I take a time out and I recharge myself and I allow, you know, just the spinning of thoughts to stop, then something new, some new idea, some strategy for you know, solving a problem that I didn't see as even an option before all of a sudden pops up. I appreciate that kind of like, um, ease and flow in my business. And so that's why I make so much time for it every day, because it's actually not taking time away from my business. It's making my business that much easier to manage and enjoyable to be a part of. Yeah, that's such a beautiful shift. And I think that in order to experience it, you have to personally do it, you know? And I, I think that that's very interesting because I know that people listen to podcasts all the time and it's a great medium because you can do two things at once, but on the same token, like if you're working out, or if you're making dinner, if you're in the car and you're trying to plug in and take advantage of that net time, that could also be a disadvantage because it's just almost like, yep, I've heard that before, meditate, okay, nice. And then they, and then they go on to the next podcast thinking, how can I feel balanced? You know, yeah. it's like, wait, <laughs> you just heard a bunch of tips over here on the first 30 podcasts. So, you know, I really think it's about practice. And to that, I'm wondering, like, how do you help people see to just take that first step, take the inspired action, take it from the mind and embody it? Mm. Yeah. So it is definitely, this is something that's very custom when I'm working with clients, but I really do have a system for kind of looking at, and this is probably where my education training comes in the most handy because I was trained to assess where people are coming in that primed background knowledge and meet them where they are, but look at where the ultimate goal or outcome is that they want to achieve and what it's going to take to get there. So I think in that very, or maybe it's the event planner in me, I, you know, not exactly <laughs> sure uh, what came first, the chicken or the egg, but um, I definitely go through this process of looking where, I, looking at where we currently are and where do we ultimately want to get to and planning back words. And I like to put in place the most effective strategies first. So someone who's coming to me and is like, I'm so overwhelmed. I can't figure out how I'm ever going to get to that next level, how I'm going to scale my business. It's just me. Uh, you know, I don't have the money to hire someone else, right? They're like, they got all these concerns, right? And we've all been there. Uh, you know, is it going to make a difference if I teach them how to be better at time management? Or is it going to make a difference if I teach them how to quiet their mind and then adopt strategies that will build on top of a peaceful layer of, you know, mm -hmm. and way of being as opposed to a frantic, anxious, overwhelmed way of being? Yeah, that makes so much sense. Um, you know, definitely love the reverse engineer way of working. I mean, I think that that is just so very smart. And of course, meeting your client where they are and really showing them or providing them the tools and tips and strategies that may, they may not even be aware that they need, right? That's why they're coming to you. They, they really need somebody that can illustrate where the gap is and actually say, hey, I think this is going to help you go from here to here. So I think that's amazing. So in your long experience of being an entrepreneur, what's been one of your biggest business lessons? Oh, 
probably not trying to do it all myself. And it really took me far longer than now looking back than it ever should have. But I really tried to do everything myself for a really, really long time. I mean, I avoided networking. I didn't hire when I should have. All of the, at every turn, I was always trying to do everything myself. And I think when I, um, you know, when I really came around to that, like I wasn't going to have the impact that I wanted to have if I didn't scale, if I didn't start empowering other people to, you know, do great work in the world. Um, and that I, it, it wasn't until I made that shift of like, that I could be a place of, of employment <laughs> and uh, of, of like, of having been a really great place to have worked, right? Because as an employer, and I think especially when you hire your first employer, you're really scared about that person leaving. And I got really clear that it wasn't about trying to hold on to everybody forever because my clients were coming and going all the time. I'm actually really adept at falling in love with someone and then saying goodbye but in the you know in the employment realm i was really really nervous about that so it it became a place an opportunity for growth that i mm-hmm. saw that i could uh you know even on a small level be a place that people really wanted to work and to be able to say that they had on their resume i love that so for the listener that's maybe considering hiring their first Um, support person, whether that is a virtual assistant or an independent contractor or an actual employee, um, what advice do you have for her? And when do you think is an ideal time in general for somebody to start bringing in some support? So as far as ideal timing, the sooner the better, (laughs) honestly. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, because you have the sooner you do it, uh, th- in all seriousness, the sooner you do it, the less you'll have to retrain yourself to be able to give things away. The more you'll be able to be in that space of, okay, what else can I give away? What else can I, you know, what else mm-hmm. can I take? What else am I freed up to do now? We know that what other ways do I want to grow and develop the business now that I don't have to do X, Y, and Z. And so when you're looking for that person, I think that the first step is to get really, really clear about what you love doing, what you don't love doing, what you're really good at. And this is like, you know, I think that this is an area where some coaching actually really helps sometimes because Mm -hmm. what you think you're good at and what you actually are really good at in your business might be two different things. Um, And, and then putting together that perfect employee avatar, like really getting clear about what you have in common, what you don't have in common, what their strengths areas are and, and how you're going to complement each other ways in which you're going to work together. Are you working in person? Are you working virtually together? Is this a full-time? Is this a part-time employee? Uh, And I like to, I make to make that wish list, you know, it can be pages. It can be just an elegant paragraph, whatever that is for you, but just bringing some clarity to, to this space and then trust that that person will show up. That's deep wisdom. And that's a formula that I think you can overlay to any single subject in the realm of building business and in life. You know, clarity is so very key. Writing down your wish list, knowing you're going to be able to manifest it, trusting and allowing. I mean, literally like boom, boom, boom. Like that's just a beautiful, beautiful framework. I love it. And the other thing that we don't hear often enough that I really liked that you just said was um, the employee avatar. We hear about client avatars all the time, but we never think of it in the other way. And it really has to have that dual purpose serving relationship. And so I really think that that's a great takeaway. I'm loving that. That's awesome. So Andrea, if you were going to have a prediction for 2021, what would it be? Ooh, 2021. I mean, I think that where we're headed is a space of a lot more clarity in the market. I feel like this has been a time for people in the world to get really clear and really trued up to their values. And they're going to be looking in a way that I feel like people have not been shopping previously for things that really resonate for them, for things that really speak to their soul, to things that really speak to their, their, um, 
priorities. So I think that it's more important than ever to get really clear as business owners about why and how we serve the way that we do and to just put our consistent values at the forefront of our marketing. I think that that's going to be really, really critical in the upcoming year. Yeah, I think that that's amazing. And it also dovetails into what you were saying earlier, which is showing up as your full self. And there's nothing more authentic than tapping into your core values and bringing them face forward and leaning into it more, right? Leaning into it more and and not having it be like a hunt and peck game, but like right there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a, this is the way, I mean, people are, you know, they're in and out of social media. They're looking on your Instagram, they're checking your Twitter, wherever you show up. So I think that consistent messaging is probably one of the most important things we can do as business owners. I I compare it to being like a lighthouse in, in port, really just shining that light, just, you know, rotating around and around. This is what I'm here to provide. This is what I make available. This is what you get when you work with me. And the right people will see that light. The right ships will see that light and they'll come in and they'll check out what's going on. So um, I think that that's, that's what we're going to see a lot more of in this upcoming That's year. a great analogy. Are you a fan of sticking with say five consistent messaging pillars when you're doing your editorial calendar and putting posts out on social media? Um, so I actually, Instagram is kind of like my happy place. That's where I most hang out. And so I do this thing where I look at the last, like maybe 12, cause it goes in rows of three on your smartphone. Um, your last 12 is basically if someone were to take an overview of, of that home screen of what they're going to see. And so I think you should have 12 different things that you talk about, um, because I mean, listen, we're all really, really complicated, interesting, amazing human beings. And 12 can, can honestly be a limiting number, you know, yeah. Sometimes people are like, Oh, so 12, that's so many, but <laughs> you're making that list. You could probably easily make a list of 50 things you'd like to talk about, but so keeping it to 12, um, and making sure that you're showing up in all of those spaces, uh, on a regular basis. I don't have any rules about you have to do it this many t- times a week or day, or, you know, I just think that the messaging has to be consistent. I love it. I love it. Do what works for you, but consistency is the key that I'm hearing. And yeah, that that's, that's, you know, it's funny because consistency in so many areas of our life, whether it's habits, whether it's social media, whether it's our messaging, it is kind of the key that unlocks it all, even though it's not sexy. <laughs> it's the thing, right? It is the thing behind the success. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the the one thing, and, and women deal with this, I think a little bit more than men do, is perfectionism getting in the way. And so I think one of the biggest things that I work with, with business owners is, you know, stepping outside of that. Like I Get that your marketing and your branding might not be a hundred percent exactly the way you want it to be, or you want to, you know, take a look at that script one more time before you go live. But value showing up more than you value your comfort zone. Value showing up and being seen and having the potential to reach your ideal client or customer more than you value your perfectionism. And watch what happens. Oh, that's gorgeous. I really, you know, I usually ask my guests what their bright light wisdom is, but I think you just dished it to us. (laughs) So thank you. Thank you for that. How can people learn more about you? So if you want to keep in touch, like I said, Instagram is where I hang out the most. You can check me out. I am a Freeman underscore Insta. Or if you want to check out offerings, um, I am... uh, at my website, andreafreemanconsulting.com. And I actually do have like a little journal exercise if anybody wants to try out some of the techniques that that we've been talking about today. So if you just go to my website, andreafreemanconsulting.com forward slash five minute journal, um, you know, it's there for you to grab. Cool. Awesome. I will make sure to put those links in the show notes so people can just come to you because yeah, you've shared a lot of wisdom. This has been super fun. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being a guest on the show. This was fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on women developing brilliance. If so, 
head on over to Apple iTunes and subscribe to this podcast. And I'd be grateful if you could leave a review or rating so more people can benefit from these inspirational stories about the solopreneur journey. Thank you.